everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is, of course, Electricity 101. My name is Spibs, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at my version of a secure and automated boat base. With the introduction of junk piles out at sea, the cargo ship event, and the about to be released aquatic monuments, boat bases have become very popular and I think will continue to do so. Also, with the addition of the new electrical components, we can make them even better. Before we get into it, however, I just want to point out this is not a demonstration of a boat base build. This is a demonstration of the electrical circuit that could be applied to pretty much any boat base that you have in some sort of way. You could simplify it or make it even better. Okay, so here I have my boat base in front of me. I'm going to start up my boat and approach it and see what happens. in everything closes so pretty simple you saw uh, there was a turret protecting me up the top and then there were these two turrets here now to get out I simply start up my boat get ready to exit and I have this timer here I'll hit it for 15 seconds and I'll leave However, what I'll just note is, although it lasts for 15 seconds, if I'm out of view of this HVHF sensor, so if I go around the corner here, the timer actually cuts power and loses it. So, if it cannot detect me, then you can see the timer is not on. I walk over to here, it detects me, and it supplies power to the timer once again. Here in front of us is the heart of the actual circuit, and we're going to have a look at how to wire that up in just a moment but before we do I wanted to go over the components that are required now this circuit in this particular configuration requires 42 units of power approximately and the components that I've used in this are three solar panels two root combiners six electrical branches four raw switches two AND switches four door controllers two splitters two HVHF sensors and one timer so let's have a look at how to wire it up so we're going to start nice and simple, we're just going to get our power supply dealt with and then we'll have a look at the rest of the circuit. I'll speed this up and we'll see you in a second. We're going to continue to just get our power supply sorted, so I'll cook this up. Now I've configured this electrical branch to output 20. We're going to connect the branch out and run it down to this electrical branch here. Next we're going to take the power out and run it to this electrical branch. I've also configured this electrical branch to 20. I'll take the branch out of this electrical branch and run it into the next electrical branch. Next, we're going to connect the HVHF sensor that I've placed on the roof on the inside of the boat base to the electrical branch on the wall here. We're going to connect it to the branch outside just here. Next, we're going to take the power out of the electrical branch and hook it up to input A of the and switch. Following that, we're going to take the power out of the HBHF sensor and run it up to the input B of the AND switch. Next, I'm going to connect the input of the timer to the AND switch that we just hooked up at the top. I'm going to wire this quickly and we'll see you in a second. Following that, we're going to connect the output of the timer to one of the splitters upstairs. Next, I'm going to connect the first power output of the splitter and run it to the electrical branch here. And then we're going to connect all these power outlets to input A on the all switches. With this electrical branch, we can just leave it configured to its default of 2. At this point, what you want to do is connect all your door controllers to your OR switches just to make sure that you've got the circuit working to this point.
Testing this circuit is very simple. All we have to do is make sure that the timer is receiving power when the HBHF sensor is triggered. And then we just simply activate the timer. We see that all three doors down here open and the top door has opened. When the timer expires in a few seconds, all the doors should close. Providing you've got everything right so far, the next part is fairly straightforward because it's pretty much a duplication of what we've already done, minus the timer out of the equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire it up. If you need to slow it down at all, then go ahead and do so, but we'll see you in a moment. So now that we have everything wired up, we can test if the outside circuit is now working. So if I approach it here, we can see that the VHF sensor detects me, it opens all the doors, I'll be protected by the turret, of course if it's on, and we can walk straight in. As soon as it doesn't detect me, the doors close. So, as usual when I wrap up, I'd just like to talk about a couple of things about the circuit to keep in mind. Number one, whenever you're using door controllers or any electrical stuff, where it stands at the moment with how the electrical system is designed, you might put your base at risk. So my first bit of advice is hide your TC away well. The other option that you have is here in the video you saw that I had this little box here, you can wall off your door controllers. Your door controllers, especially for the double doors, don't have to be mounted on the outside of the wall frame. You can simply put it next to it, still pair it to the door, and then wall it off if you're worried about people just rewiring it. Of course, this is reasonably redundant with how the HBHF sensor is set up in this particular circuit, but you might be able to use it in other instances. The other thing is, you may not have three turrets just at hand to be able to do it, so you, of course you can uh, mix and match any traps, you can remove some of the circuitry as well, you don't have to have the three turrets set up like I did here, I just wanted to show the possibilities of the circuit. Additionally, you saw that I had shotgun traps here, this is of course if anybody tries to go deep, it will either slow them down or stop them completely. The other point is, you can customise this to whatever your needs are. This demo was simply a proof of concept and to inspire ideas on how to really use it instead of just using the components in their most basic form, which I've seen other content creators do. Now, again, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I just like to try and get a little bit more creative to try and make it as secure as possible. But us content creators can only work with what we're given with and what our brain allows us to do. Alrighty guys, that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you found it helpful and I hope it inspires some awesome boat based creations. Any feedback or questions you guys do have about this episode, hit me up in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I always appreciate hearing from you guys. Just as usual, if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button, but if you did like it, smash the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, though we all know it does absolutely nothing, and follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description below. Any other links that I may have mentioned in this video will be in the description below as well. Otherwise, guys, we will see you in the next one. Take care.